Hayud, rolling page, Reish Tezayin, Reish Tezayin the Maral, Hayud B'dibu Kaverim. The tenth characteristic you need is association with peers, meaning we're just in the middle of this. Just ki odom kasher hu yichidi enum kabel Torah. As an individual, you cannot receive Torah. You don't have the capacity. Perakam the tainus of Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Chanino, ma'idich siv cherev al habadim. The sword should come upon the badim. The swords come upon the Chachomim who study Torah by themselves, not interacting with others. And not only that, they become foolish, meaning they misunderstand the Torah. Venoalu. I mean, has a person sinned because he acts foolishly? That's why he sins. And Torah has to be minimally, you have to have two people involved. Since a person is physical, so how does one express his intellect? To take the intellect, intellect is, is, is what? Is spiritual. The intellect is rooted in one's neshama, intellect. So if a person only thinks within himself and doesn't share the idea with a third person, so it remains entombed within the physicality. There's no expression of the intellect. But what he's, each person studies for himself, and doesn't express his intellect with a third party, Leo Seichel, Nivdal Min Aguf, Ein Mishach Min Klau. He doesn't become wiser. So I asked yesterday, what about if he verbalizes mm -hmm. it? Right, I mean, that's the reason why it's Chaimi Il Motzeim. It's interesting, I once mentioned that it says if Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have broken the Luchas, Torah would have never been forgotten. It would have been so emblazoned on their neshamos, it would have been re retained forever. forever. But when the luchas were broken, as the Gemara says, the, the, the letters drifted upward, heavenward, that was an indication of the forget forgetting of Torah. It just faded out. And therefore, a person has to persevere and learn to continuously review, otherwise you would not be able to retain the Torah to in terms of remembering it. So if the, if he wouldn't have broke, so what, what is it all about? So we explained it was this: that if Moshe Rabbeinu wouldn't have broken the Torah, smashed the Luchos, Klausur would have been destroyed. That Hashem says, "You'll be the future. We'll have a new Klal Yisrael, and what would be? You'd be forever. Correct? Klausur failed. Before they failed, they were what? They achieved what was Adam Kodem Achet." They would have lived eternally, as the Gemara says in Avodah Zarah. Now, what is eternity? What is the concept of forgetting? Forgetting is what? Is, 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 is regression, deterioration. What is death? In the physical sense. Right? Over time. You advance, you reach a certain point in life, then you start regressing. Things start winding down. And eventually, when the person dies, is a decomposition process. And over time, eventually it reverts back to dust. That's the decomposition process. The chet, death, death of, of, of intellect, in, forgetting is the death of the intellect. That's what it was. If they wouldn't have been choteh with the chet of egel, the physicality would have spiritualized. The concept of regression, regression had no relevance to them. Because in, within the spiritual context, everything is continuous. It's eternal. But the moment they sinned, and now you're subject to death, now you begin forgetting. What forgetting is to the, what, what death is to the body, is forgetting is to the mind. That's what it is. That's fading out. It's a fading out process. So therefore, but that's only within the physical. When does it take on a spiritual? If you share it with someone, then it becomes more spiritual. It's more spiritual.
share it with somebody personally, they can respond to me. And I share it. It's not, there's no back and forth necessarily. Just expressing it that another person absorbs and hears what I say. Right? So there's no back and forth. It's a different level. So I asked the question board about it, just verbalize it. Nobody, you're not talking to anybody. You're talking to yourself. But you, you, you actually you articulate and you verbalize it. I mean, the Gemara says, the Gemara says, it seems to be by yourself. Nobody else is there. But the way he, he's explaining it, you don't need a third party. Right? Even by, you, by yourself. Not sure why you need the other person there. No, 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 but what do you need to party? Why can't I just... But he's saying, because you're expressing it, the body is physical, and when it leaves the body, expression of intellect, but he used, he, he, I, th I think he's alluding to it. Because he says, When you express your intellect to a third party, to another party, I think if somebody, if, it, if, if it's like recorded by a third party, then it already okay. takes on meaning. Otherwise, it, it's what? Who knows he ever said anything? But, but then the way he explains it, it really shouldn't make a difference. Because he says it's, it's an expression of the body. Once it leaves the body, it's no longer in the physical state. That's the expression of intellect. That seems that it's physical physical. But it's interesting, I, with this I understand, the Gemara says, it's the Gemara Sanhedrin, which we learned, the Gemara says, what's the difference between Talmidi Chacham Shem Bebovel and Talmidi Chacham Shem Be'eretz Yisrael? So it's Talmidi Chacham Shem Bebovel, the, the Pesuk refers to them as Maklos. Makel in Hebrew is a, a staff, a stick. Because when they would study, show you Chovtim Zezeb, the Maklos. When they would enter into a dialogue, it was like they would be, it was, it was like a battle. Mm. I have to convince you and you have to convince me. But in their cell, they were called noim. Because they were manim zer ezebalofa. They learned pleasantly. There was a pleasantness. So Rashi explains, in Bavel, I had to convince you that in terms of my position, you convinced me. So it was, it was a battle. In their cell, the people, their minds, no, they worked together to try to understand. It's not I'm telling you and you're telling me. We're working together. There was a, there was a, a joint effort to try to understand. And Bible, there was no joint effort. There's me and you. Meaning, I'm listening to you, because if I don't listen to you, you're not going to listen to me. But who am I interested in? I'm interested in myself. In Bavel, in Erzro, it's not I'm interested in myself. We're, we have an objective. The objective is to understand what the Torah is saying. Therefore, we will work in conjunction to try to understand. Therefore, it's called Noam. It's pleasant. Erzul is pleasant. And they have this, so that's why I was learned that's Avir Ara Machkin. There was a clarity in Erzul which they didn't have above it. So what I'm saying is, what's, what's the whole one's name? When, when I'm in it for myself, that's Homer. That's Homer. In Erzul, where they're in it, Lashem Shemaim, what is Hashem saying? That's Noam. That's pleasant. That's Rochem Da'achino, Holy Siddhas Shalom. That's Noam. Erzul is Noam. Bavel is not Noam. That's why Eretz Bavel is referred to as Eretz Hashucha. It's a darkened, darkened land. Right? It was a darkened land because of the Golos being outside. Therefore, to be able to come about, you, you don't see it right. Because if you see the value of working together, you're not going to be, you're not going to be in a struggle with one another. No, 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 no. I mean, even if we work together, I still there's, still there's a sharing of ideas, right? That's it, yeah, but there's a goal. I mean, you tell me something, say, it can't be, right? It's like you want to sell me a product where, where you tell me it's, it's gold and it turns out to be uh, whatever it is. It's, 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 it's lead. You can, that's what you're telling me.
is known Rabaran, when he would say a shear, most people just couldn't keep up. That is, is the way his mind worked. But there were a few people who were really. And he was like fire when they said the shear. And if a person would ask a question, which would be a very good question, he'd start screaming at the person. Because, you know, because right away when you challenge a person, you get a little, you know, you want to stop to think for a moment. So you need that moment, and his mind worked very quickly. So, you know, of course, he spoke Yiddish. So he says, the Mr. Poyer. So when he attacks you with the Poyer, you're a, like a, a peasant. So right here, it's time to think about your question. You understand? So, so the more he would use those expressions, that, that was an indication the question was a good question. You know, it was a good point. Otherwise, he wouldn't even, re he wouldn't even respond to the person's question. Rabaran.